So yeah, deer camp. Uh, for, for if you're watching, you don't know what that is like. Not so much the hunt or the kill. Okay, so I'm tagged out. There it is. Everything wrapped up nice and tight inside the waste management canvas dumpster bag and then a seven mil tarp. Welcome to Time by the Tent, and welcome to the 2023 Wisconsin Gun Deer Season. Tell you more about that in a little bit. What my thoughts are on that, since I have not participated in a firearm opening deer season since 2007. But first, we're going to get up to the tent, get everything unpacked out of the car, get up to the tent, get that stove warmed up, and get the campfire going. I'm not going to hunt tonight for archery, which I could, because I don't want to go in the woods and disturb anything that would potentially be there in the morning, in which I can take with a firearm. So, everything is as it was left. Look chilly, about 36 degrees, very light winds right now. It's supposed to be a very wonderful weekend up here. It's Friday, and I, if need be, I can be up here, up uh, here um, until Wednesday morning. The bathroom has. Uh, fell down. We had really strong winds up here yesterday, so I'll put that back up. That's not a problem. Get that set up for today. Uh, the plan is if I am able to take two deer, which I have tags for, then I'll take everything down um, the next following day. Like if I get two deer on Saturday or Sunday, uh, the next day I would dismantle everything and pack everything away and come back in the spring. So let me get things kind of sorted out here. You can see the wind is really strong. Whip that up. And uh, then I'll get back with you. So I've got everything up from the car and I got the stove going inside. I haven't got the campfire going. And I was thinking what would be a neat way or a tradition thing in which we could do here on our new property. And I was watching YouTube channel Travel Trailer Hunting Adventures. It's a guy out of Minnesota. He's got a, a fifth wheel and his, fan, and his brothers and his dad hunt. And he hangs a, deer, a, a sign up every year for deer camp and I thought that would be a really neat thing in order to do for us. So Holly made a deer camp sign and then each year we'll just attach a little placard for the year in which it is and we'll hang it up above our peaceful pine sign and there we go. Deer camp 2023. It's just me 
but that counts is now open for business. Last week when it was incredibly windy and I was here, the door was flapping and knocked off one of the items up on the shelf and fell and broke much of the glass globe here for our lantern. Now it didn't damage the holding container, which is fine because that's this is easy to replace. So during the winter months, I'll have to scurry around and uh, look at thrift stores to see if I can find the right size um, globe that I can get. And if I can get one, I'm going to get two. So if this happens again, I got a replacement. But uh, minor inconvenience. It still works. I'm just missing five inches of uh, 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 glass there. So I just got to be careful. It is just absolutely quiet. So quiet. No wind. getting everything established and can be here as long as through Wednesday morning Lord willing I don't have to do that I can be gone packed up and everything dismantled here by Sunday afternoon I have two tags an Aunt Lewis only and a buck tag and uh, we'll see how that goes so it's getting the fire going out here I'll get everything off the wagon before it gets dark, get inside. Uh, let's get, gonna have uh, hamburgers for tonight, I guess, would be the best move I can make. And green beans and a little stra strawberry cream pie. So I mentioned that this is the first opener of firearm deer season that I've participated in since 2007. That's when I was in Illinois. And then life and everything else, meeting Holly, and everything else got, you know, precedence over that. So deer camp to, what does deer camp mean? It means many different things to many different people. If you ask anybody that's participating in a deer camp this year, they will have their own unique meaning towards it. Whether it is to get out in the woods, camaraderie with your friends or family, whatever that uh, definition is, there's, I don't think, a wrong answer to that. Some people only participate in firearm gun season. That's the way I was for many years until I took up archery. Didn't do that good with archery. Got two deers, two deer in nine years. And now here I've gotten one deer in 50 hours. So that's a little better ratio. But we had deer camp back home, me and the guys. We didn't drink, we didn't smoke, we hung out at what was a built purpose of a wash house that was on the old homestead. And then it turned into a storage building, which the building was, I think, 16 by 20. And that's where I converted over and turned it into a cabin. It was 15, 10, 15 minute walk from any, from, from the woods that I hunted in. Then you get in the car and you drive anywhere on the farm or, and, and hunt there as well. But the guys would always come over and, and it wasn't, it didn't matter if it was July, January or November, we would watch deer hunting videos on DVD, Mossy Oak or Primos or Realtree. We'd have it on and I think one year, I don't know what year it was, but we we had a deer hanger and the total, it was Matt, Matt, Theodore, myself, my two brothers, 
and I think Mike, we were all within three to four years of each other in age. That, that year we took down 13 deer total. That was for the whole season from archery to, to gun to muzzleloader. And we'd hang them up at the cabin, take pictures. And that was just what we did. And I see these videos, and you've seen them too, where they have multiple people at camp, and they all sleep in the same tent in bunks. Which is cool and neat and great and all this stuff. But there's always one person that sleeps great. And then there's four or five other people that have miserable nights because the one person sleeps great because typically the one person snores. Or you, somebody never, there's always multiple people that never get a good night's sleep. Uh, that's the way I see it. Uh, we tried that at the cabin. There was, I think there was six or seven of us in that little cabin or that little building that we converted to a cabin. We did it one time and that was it. But uh, that was a, we had deer camp, I think, um, 2007 was the last year camp I had, and that was the last year camp that was held at that cabin. And then Matt and Theodore, those are brothers, they're, those are cousins. They took it up, I think, on their property for a couple of years. And then I think Lauren, Lauren was a cousin. He didn't hunt. He more just hung out and filmed uh, for Matt or um, when Ben, which was a brother of Theodore and Matt, and then there was another Matt. Um, he would film and hang out. He wasn't a hunter. But yeah, I think we had it first several years, like probably five years maybe, deer camp. And they would take pictures at the ho at the cabin on the, hang uh, the, the hanging rack. And then either take it to the butcher or they would go take it and butcher it out of their house or the ones we I killed I would butcher out on the table behind the cabin. So yeah, deer camp. Uh, for, for if you're watching, you don't know what that is like. Not so much the hunt or the kill. Many people go into that as getting meat and feeding family, but it's like uh, your favorite team waking up on Super Bowl Sunday and watching your favorite team win, or or Daytona 500 if you're NASCAR, or Indy 500, or Christmas if you're secular, or uh, waking up on Christmas knowing that's the birth of Christ if you're uh, a Christian believer. That type of emotional connection is what deer camp is to many people. So I guess before it gets dark, I should uh, go ahead and get the hamburgers out and get those cooking. Now that you've heard my story about deer camp. I was never one, I, Ben got older, Ben was the youngest uh, guy of, of, of the cousins there. Lauren would film Ben or the non-brother Matt, uh, Ben's non-brother, there was Matt and Matt. I never wanted anybody to film me because I, my goal to go out in the woods was to knock down a deer, take a deer home. And I didn't need any issues with somebody else sitting beside me moving or saying I got the shot, uh, go ahead and take it. I, I needed to focus on putting a deer on the ground. And I, I think some of them filmed themselves. Now, th when I say film, this was 2004, 6, 2007. This is well before the technology that we have now where you can, you know, you got a um, Tacticam that you slip on the ed end of, on your bow or your gun. Or you can mount it on a on a tree. You got all these fangle dangle things, the GoPros and all that. That was all before. This was ancient. You know, you might as well just had a rock and chiseled your image in on a rock that you were trying to capture um, on that type of uh, situation. So, um, so I, I and and in Illinois, back when I hunted, 
another story. I started hunting in 94. No, wait, hold on, that's not right. 95. I, I would hunt with Dad occasionally in 94, and I think maybe 93. But I went on my own. I got my hunter safety course done in 95, and then I got my first uh, deer in 95, button buck with a shotgun at 84 yards away on the last morning of the season. In Illinois, it's the, I'm pretty sure it's the same as, as it always been, the Friday, Saturday, and Sunday before Thanksgiving, and the Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday following Thanksgiving. Here in Wisconsin, it is the Sunday, the Saturday before Thanksgiving to the Sunday following Thanksgiving consecutively. In Illinois, it breaks it up over two weekends. Um, And in, in the 90s, or late 90s, you could, and it was a shotgun only down there. Here, it's any ethical, any way you can ethically take down a, a deer. So, bazooka, cannon, rock, and a you know, potato gun, I don't know. I'm using an 870 Remington 12 gauge deer slugs. Getting to the point, back then, you could sit in the tree stand on opening morning and you, could, you couldn't keep up with the tally. I mean, if you had a notepad, one shot, two shot, three shot, just, con, you know, 30 shots an hour would not be uncommon. And then it, as it got into the 2000s and 2005s, and that opening morning got quieter and quieter, not because there were less deer, just because it seemed like there was less hunters. So I'm interested to see how the noise, how they, the, uh, how that sounds tomorrow morning. Will there be a lot of boom, 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 boom? Or is it going to be very, very quiet like it is with archery where you'll hear a gun shot off in the distance like somebody goose hunting or waterfowl or squirrel hunting or something or grouse? Or is it going to be pretty, pretty, pretty heavy? Because I know behind our property there is uh, a property that people are hunting on and then back on the other side there's people that's hunting. There's hunters over here. I'm the only one on our property. Nobody to the neighboring property that I'm aware of, they looked like they packed up and left last weekend with the camper, their, their uh, pull-behind camper. So I'm interested to see what that noise consistency is. And, and the joke of hunting back where I was from was schools, where I'm from, in Southern Illinois, a lot of schools just took off that day. Like, they didn't didn't go to school. It, I went to school. It was up to, I think it was freshman or sophomore year in high school before they made that rule or they changed that. Because I remember in seventh grade hunting, passing up on a little, on, on a deer that I, I don't know why I passed up on it, but going to school, coming back home, hunting. And that was, I remember doing that. And then they changed it to a teacher institution day because half the kids weren't at school and half the teachers weren't at school either. So... The joke of it was, everybody was in their stand on Friday morning. Some people didn't hunt Friday evening because they didn't want to deal with deer, getting a deer and then having to deal with it in the dark. Saturday morning, like every stand was full. Saturday night, mm, hit and miss. Sunday morning, you know, a fraction of the stand. This was the joke. No, but there's no statistics on this. But like 3 o'clock on Sunday afternoon at the first season, Pretty much anybody who was hunting, if they didn't get a deer, they pretty much said, forget it, we're going home. And the joke was, well, you can sit in any, you shouldn't do this, but you could sit in any tree stand in the county because nobody's going to come out and go, you're in my tree stand because they've all quit and given up. And it was even more, that was even more of a reality the last Sunday of the second season um, where people were just, you know, they would hunt. Thursday people worked, Friday people, Friday afternoon people get off early, they would go hunt, and then Saturday and Sunday morning that was it, and if they didn't get a deer, um, I was out there every single time I could, trying to get, a, you know, fill the tag, so, all right, I got to stoke this, sto this fire up here, and I'm going to get some hamburgers cooking, uh, the tent is warming up quite nicely, and I have talked enough about deer camp and the stories in which uh, I've participated in, in the activity, Probably have more, but uh, this is a special deer camp video, so this is appropriate. Thank you for hanging out with me, 
Uh, if you have made it this far and you feel compelled to, please subscribe and comment and, and like the video. And we can go from there. You got three hamburger patties and fresh cut green beans, which I always find odd in that description. Wouldn't they always be fresh? These are moldy, old, aged green beans in a can. I, I don't get that. That's what I'm having. I'm looking behind me. I am not. I am not sure if the camera will pick it up, but there's a haze because there's no wind from my camp, my stove, and my campfire. It just. It seems like there's a little haze in the in the air. I am very fortunate that I have deer on the property or in the area. Um, if you are a avid watcher of hunting or camping or tent videos, you will have seen or will see Joe and Zach Survival's um, 2023 Deer Hunting the Movie. He puts one out for every weekend of the Minnesota gun season. And, and it's I'm not going to ruin the surprise because he puts it right in the title that there are him and his dad and three other guys are in that area upper Minnesota area in some national forest and there is zero they had snow on the ground and there was zero 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 deer sign at uh, when they were up there for the first weekend which all of the weekends would have been completed at this point or close to it and uh, how discouraging that is. You put all this time and effort and you buy tags and sight in the gun and all this stuff and there is zero deer tracks in three inches of snow and he went everywhere looking for deer tracks and his dad did and the other guys and then you go into Minnesota. I don't know the, the distance between his location and Trey Run Wild uh, his location Terry up there. He was able to shoot a doe within the first hour and a half of opening morning. And then his son, Hunter, was able to get one later on. Um, so it's just very interesting how some areas have zero deer, deer and others have deer. Terry's got deer running all over his property on the trail cameras. And, and Joe said in his video that uh, the problem is the wolves. They need to get rid of the wolves. And the DNR up there had talked about possibly canceling deer season this year but you know they're not going to do that because the amount of money revenue that comes in from buying tags and clothing and fill in the blank um, that's directly related or indirectly related to hunting they're not going to do that so I'm hoping uh, it would be nice to praying that I am able to knock down two deer this weekend, take home butcher out, and add to the um, freezer. All right, I'm using a piece of pine that I'm going to burn as a plate. It does look kind of like one of those fancy Food Network displays. Uh, not intentional. Green beans, fresh cut green beans, and hamburgers with uh, barbecue sauce on them. And then I'll have um, wine punch fruit drink, or I might have a root beer. Anyway, that's where we're at right now. And then after I eat, I'm going to relax and get the tent in order, get the clothes in order, get the gun ready, and I'll bring you along with me on that. Okay, kind of got things sorted out. Um, don't want to get too much clothes laid out because of the smoke in the tent and all that. But I've got that over there sorted out. Guns up there, ready to go. And then I've got the cook stove ready with the amount of water I need to make hot cappuccino to put in there to take to the stand with me. I still have to make peanut butter sandwich and get some meat sticks and throw in the bag because the intention is set all day and not come back or set until I get one and then come back, regroup, and go back out and 
get another one. Um, always before, back when I was talking about the cabin thing, we had electricity. It was on the homestead, it was the farm. Uh, so I don't have electricity. Instead of getting up early, stoking the stove really hot in order to boil water, this is a better alternative. And then it's ready to go and I can head out. Uh, legal hunting time is 6.28 here. So in the woods, you're not going to be able to really see anything till probably about 6.40ish, 6.50, uh, really to be... Uh, if you're on the edge of the woods or something, you could see pretty much at that time, but not where I'm going to be at. So, that being said, I will see you in the deer stand tomorrow morning as we kick off opening morning of 2023 Wisconsin firearm season. I thank you for coming along and being part of the program. Okay, it's a little after 5. Shooting time is 628. Getting things together. Getting the hot water boiled for the cappuccino and the thermos. We got the sandwich made last night. Peanut butter for snack or lunch. We got meat sticks. Gonna get dressed. It's a little chilly in the tent, which is fine. That's what I wanted. I don't want to be sitting in here when it's, uh, well, it's uh, 40. You can't really see that very good. About 47 in here on the corner there. It's a little warmer over here, probably about 55. 60 over by the stove. I don't want to be super hot and then get dressed and sweat Walk out to stand sweat even more So I'll dress accordingly it's supposed to be 48 for a high today currently 27 outside And we'll see what happens. I'll see you in the tree stand at first light Well, good morning. I didn't even get to show you from the tree stand, but I have a buck on the ground seven a uh, seven point buck Um, where's my stand at? Oh, right there. There's my stand. This is the exact same spot that that spike buck came in. I shot him right there, and he ran that way. This buck came from that direction, I and mean, I shot that spike buck November third this buck i heard him walking because it's dead silent came in here so i got a little work ahead of me i got a three quarter of a three tenths of a mile drag back to camp get him all situated regroup and then go out and try to fill the antlerless only tag um, you can see he got a chip there and see i don't think that point here counts because it's just a nub but everything else that's a very that buck's been rubbing on stuff and i can't find any place where any of these rubs or scrapes are at so very thankful that i'm able to take another one this one looks to be about 90 to 100 pounds the other one was we was about 80 80 ish pounds i think this one might be bigger than 100 but i don't have the tools in order to weight and i'm not going to spend the money in order to weigh a deer when i can just butcher it out and based on on the weight so it's a nice deer very happy that uh was able to take another one off our property so the value of deer are now going down it's not just one um I say that because we bought the property, bought the hunting equipment and all that stuff and uh, every animal we take uh, ethically off the land, that value goes down um, um, just jokingly. So let me get this uh, cleaned up and get it back to camp and then we will eat breakfast and go back out. This is the first time I've ever hunted this stand in the morning. I knew that this stand would be a good one. I've got a trail camera behind, you know, just up 10 feet off that, off the stand on another tree there. And um, I believe I've got this buck on trail camera a couple of weeks ago on a Thursday morning. So back at camp, um, two hours and 10 minutes since I shot the deer, got it back to camp. It's over here.
drug it, I think, around a half mile. A little between a quarter and a half mile. Uh, because that's just the way we do things. We don't have a four-wheel or a tractor, and the woods are so thick, and all this other stuff. So, got it here. It is bigger just by size, not, you know, the longer you drag something, the heavier it gets. It is much bigger than that uh, spike buck, which would be expected, because the spike buck would be... A, year and a half old this would be two and a half year old i would guess uh or a hefty hefty year and a half so i think this is about a 110 to about a 110 uh, 110 pound buck so it is eight it is nine o'clock on opening morning i am going to regroup dry things out stoke the fire really get it hot dry things out because i am soaked from dragging it my hat is completely dripping with sweat you wanted to know that and then uh, eat and go back out and try to get an antlerless uh, deer, a doe, or I would prefer a doe, not a button buck. Um, and get them packed up and pack everything up and go home tomorrow afternoon. That would be the plan. I'm halfway there. And opening morning, you know, I talked about yesterday that you would hear you couldn't keep up with shots and then it was in the early in the mid 90s and the early 2000s it was getting more and more you know sparse it's the way it was here um i heard one shot two minutes before legal hunting time which that's always the way it is and then there was like through two shots and i shot three times because i shot once and knocked it down and shot the second time missed it and the third time dispatched it not the greatest shooting that I wanted. I'm not proud of that. And then there's been maybe 8 to 12 shots since then. It's been very, very sparse. Um, when I was pulling this deer up the trail, this four-wheeler trail here, I saw a couple of deers about a quarter mile down run over this way. And then there's a shot way, way off in the distance. So that's the plan. Thanks for being with me. Very thankful that I'm able to take this deer and certainly going to try for another one. I've got, there's a couple of does I've seen that I've talked about on the, on the pro, uh, videos. Very big, about that size as well. So that would be, though the discouragement is the dragging out of the woods, when I'm frying it up and making jerky and hamburger and all that, a little bit of effort's uh, worth it. So got the stove going, trying to dry stuff out. For those of you who are watching this that are hunters, you may already know this, but if you don't, this would be a good uh, tip and product to use. I use gloves to fill dress the deer. And then you touch things and you get the blood on your hands. Wet ones, I need to put a small um, Ziploc bag full of wet ones, wet wipes, in my bag because my hands were dirty and I was trying to clean them off. I didn't have anything, so I was using my very, very hot cappuccino in the thermos, and that kind of worked. And you just kind of, you know, get some of the material off, uh, so you, you learn. But some wet wipes would be a good addition to the hunting backpack. Don't have them now, and got one more deer to get, and then we're done. But for next year, still a really nice morning. I think it was 27 when I got up, high of 48 today, just absolutely no clouds at all. A very light wind, so um, got the heart here, I'm going to put that... Uh, I don't know where I'm going to put that. I guess I'll put it over by the deer. So, it can kind of... I mean, it's not hot. It, this is not going to spoil or anything. There's a chill. Let's see what it is currently right now. Uh, we're looking at... Yeah, about 38-ish. 36, 38. So, yeah, there's still a chill in the air. But I'm very, very warm from dragging that deer. Oh, every bit of over a quarter of a mile, up and down. And then when I got to the trail, right, if you're not familiar, there's a state four-wheeler snowmobile trail that 
uh, divides 35 acres and then I'm on three acres of the property and there's a very big incline so I got the wagon and went down and got it and drug it and ro rolled the wagon to the lowest point drug it up the small embankment and then finished dragging it to the camp um, like Holly said, we're going to have to figure out some kind of pulley system for next year to just get it up here. Because I can get it to the trail, just getting it up here. Also a cart, at least getting a some kind of one-wheel or two-wheel cart just to get it from where it's shot to a closer. So I have more energy to hoist it up the embankment. Alrighty, so that's where, that's the excitement. Didn't even have time to show you the stand, but it's the same stand, the same spot. That was interesting. I'm not sure where I'm going to go as soon as I get things dried out because that stand has a field dressing pile 13 yards from it, which that doesn't necessarily mean anything. If uh, dough is running through because it's spooked, whatever, you know, it's not going to affect it. It's not going to go, oh, I shouldn't run there because something got killed there. I'm spooked and I'm going to run and ask questions later so may go to that stand that I was in that's 80 yards closer I had that doe um, last Sunday morning no last Saturday morning had a big doe behind the stand that I couldn't get a shot on with the archery with the bow so thank you for being with me appreciate it it's not so lonely when you are with me here at camp and the fun has just begun. Okay, it is 10.30 in the morning. The stuff that I'm going to wear is now dry. And I'm going to go, I haven't decided which stand. kind of want to go back to the stand I shot that buck out of this morning. But I don't know. I, I'll decide when I get out there what I want to do. I don't know if there's a right answer or wrong answer. Um, so, but it's warming up. It's about 42 outside right now, and uh, we'll see if we can get another one. What about 1.30? I haven't seen any deer from this stand. I've heard two shots far in the distance. Gonna have lunch, peanut butter sandwich. Stay in the stand until dark, see if we can tag out today. Nothing was seen this evening. It was dead quiet for, why? Well, you saw the, shot the deer. Uh, then dried everything out and then got back in the stand at 1049 and didn't come out of the stand not the stand I shot that deer that buck out of this morning one I've that's 80 yards closer to camp sat in that stand from 1049 till 442 when that was the end of legal hunting time and didn't see anything heard oh maybe 10 shots maybe 12 the whole afternoon uh, on opening day so that's how it goes very happy I was able to harvest that that buck talked to the neighbor the neighbor texted and he said asked if I'd shot this morning I told him yeah and told the story and he had not has not seen anything all day and I don't know if anybody else in his hunting party has or not so gonna unwind here get changed and then get the fires going inside and out and we're going to cook all five brats so I have some for tomorrow night um, if I'm here tomorrow which best situation would be I, I'm able to harvest another uh, an antlerless deer in the morning and uh, 
pack up the tent all in the dumpster bags, wrap it up like a present, put it in front of the security camera, walk away until spring. You'll see how that happen, when that happens, whether it's tomorrow or Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday. So, all right, thanks for hanging out with me, and I'll see you in a few minutes. All right, got brats. I don't know if I'll eat all of them. I'll save what I don't eat. Root beer and green beans. I've got uh, barbecue sauce and relish for those as well. So just a normal night of the tent. Um, so we'll go back and uh, go to that stand that I shot the deer in the morning, this morning at, because um, I didn't go there this evening. I want to try something different. So we'll go there in the morning and see if we can replicate um, the, another deer on uh, for, for meat for the freezer, be an antlerless or a button buck, or a doe or a button buck, and go from there. So I don't think there's anything. I'll get everything kind of organized here tonight. And I think that'll be about it for this evening. I'm just going to lay around and do nothing. I'm very sore and tired from dragging that deer. But that's the reward of it, so I'm okay with it. So I'll see you in the stand in the morning. Okay, so I'm tagged out. First time that's happened. Um, shot at about 30 yards. What I got was um, a yearling button buck. It's got, which is legal for me to take because it's less than three inches in antler length. And I've seen this one camera, uh, trail cam before. I shot it. Where am I at here? Hold on. It ended up piled up underneath. Of course, it always goes under the most uh, difficult thing. But I did shoot it. It came out back over here. And so I shot it right there. You can see the deer stand there. You can, I'll get a perspective from the deer stand. And then it started bleeding here. And then I shot it one more time because it just stood there. And then it went down under that tree uh, branch right here. And then I drug it over there to be able to process it. So it's not the biggest deer. It is a legal deer. It'll produce probably 25, maybe 30 pounds of meat. That's fine with the bigger buck that I got in the car uh, that I got yesterday. Uh, our freezers will be topped off and probably will need freezer space, so we'll figure that out. Um, so yeah, very successful, thankful that uh, I'm able to do such, harvest three deer in three weeks on our property, utilizing all the tags that we were issued. Whew, I got a process one. This one's going to be a lot easier to drag out than that big buck last uh, yesterday. So I'll get it back to camp and then I'll, I'll eat and then I'll start disassembling camp 
pack everything up and I'll show you what that is and then uh, we'll shut her down for the year. That was also the same stand that I took the buck out yesterday morning, shot the buck from yesterday morning. I shot the buck from in the stand on the right hand side, 13, 14 yards. This one was 30 yards to the left hand side. So all three deer this year taken from the same stand and two of the three were taken and shot in the exact same spot. Um, so technically, I mean, we've got two bucks and then a, a yearling, which uh, is an, uh, an antlerless only deer, is a deer that obtains no antlers or antlers of th less than three inches. And this has got nubs on the top, so it's perfectly legal. And um, I think this one I've seen, we've seen multiple deer on camera. Um, so happy, I'll process it and uh, we'll head back to camp made it back to camp with the harvest also went and got both trail cameras there's no need for us paying uh, to take images in the woods when it's not important we'll deactivate those accounts and then reactivate them in the spring or whenever we decide to put the the two trail cameras back out we will leave the camera here at camp so we can monitor our storage facility when we're not here so, I went ahead and took that, oh, where, yeah. went ahead and took the button buck. Well, I was completely dead silent for, oh, uh, this morning. The only noise was the occasional squirrel, a bird, or a four-wheeler or a vehicle in the distance. Then you'd hear random gunshots. But again, if you didn't know it was gun season, you were just sitting here around the campfire, you wouldn't have known it was gun season. They're just not the, the noise. I haven't heard a gunshot in over an hour. Getting to the point. Smaller deer. We've seen it on trail camera a number of times or many, several uh, of them of uh, that uh, size. So decided, Holly and I decided it was best that we, we didn't have to, but if we had the opportunity, I should take um, one that fits the tag, an antlerless only deer for a couple of reasons. One, we bought the tag. We were the 898th of 900 uh, selected. So we were the second to the last to get that. And I would really feel bad that if I didn't feel that and somebody else could have gotten it and filled it. So I went ahead and utilized that tag. And two, the if I would have got another, which I, I would have shot anything that was of legal standard with the tag. But with this, it will fit in the vehicle and we can take it home. If I got another deer like I did yesterday, we could make it fit. We put them, I put plastic down on the trunk of the Honda Civic. That's what we got. And then both of them will fit nicely. And then we take them home and we butcher them out. So that's where we're at. I am going to take the deer down, put it in the car, then come back up fix supper or fix lunch i don't know either stew or spam I'm probably just gonna have spam and then i'll take everything out of the tent that goes home pack the car completely full and then disassemble everything and i'll show you how we pack it away how we have discovered that this might be the best way if you don't have a solid structure building in which you can protect your stuff in a situation like we are where it's not uncommon to have 24 inches of snow in the uh, on the ground so thank you for being with me some of you enjoy this kind of activity those who don't have already clicked off and uh, we'll get things wrapped up for the for the year so I got the radio I got the radio cleaned out you can see all the little white stuff down there Philip and his friend was not in there so either they've moved out because they knew we were taking the tent down or they weren't home so I didn't have to feel bad about getting them to come out of the radio. Um, last night I did see uh, one mouse. I could hear him running and he would run along there, out there and underneath the logs I have there for the door. And a couple of times he had a big wad of like paper towel or something white. So either he was moving out or something, I don't know. So. Um, so yeah, that's, I figured I'd do that and then 
the stove is cold, but I wanted to make sure I got had some ashes in them that was still hot. I put them in the fire, the campfire, and let this get ice cold so I can pack it up too. May be the last campfire of the year until spring. Cooked up some spam, and I also am going to burn trash. I started up with just anything that I had saved for fire starter. I'm just going to. I burnt all that and whatever else I see that is paper, not plastic, that can be burnt. I'm gonna burn that and get that all disappeared. And I'm gonna eat, and then the packing will begin. If you guys can help, that would be that would be great. So I'll meet back here in about 15 minutes. Here is the before picture. So this is where we're at at this point. I've got the mattress in that blue bag. It's a mattress bag. It's a memory foam mattress and they say if you fold it you want to fold it inverted so whenever you put it back you long ways like a hot dog and I did it to where the bottom is folded so when we put it back flat there'll be an arc in the center and it'll work itself back down by setting on it and laying on it so shouldn't be that big of a deal got the bathroom all taken down got that stuff still to take down and so the stove's gonna go in next. So that's where we're gonna go, and I can stack it up up to five foot because then that bird, that is the same bag, and it will go, it'll nestle on top of it with a tarp wrapped around it. And these are the items that I'm leaving out: the wood box, the kindling box, the stove, uh, the pipe that went on the top of the stove. It was outside all, all the time, so it's not gonna hurt anything. We're getting there. All right, full on that, but I can go another. Foot and a half or two and a half foot because of that. Storage tents down and almost completely dry and we're empty. I just gotta pull the floor up and disassemble it. Just about there. Kind of a sad moment. Taking the tent down until spring. It has served us well. Protected us from the weather. Unknown critters. And we're just about ready to seal it all up. Just about there. Left the frame on the ground. The frame ain't gonna rust. May get some dirt in it, but that's easy to clean out. Like right there. Um, no. I'm just saved from taking all the components apart. The double dumpster bags has worked. Now I'm gonna take that, uh, this tarp here, which is seven mil, and wrap it like a Christmas present and stake it down with uh, stakes, uh, tent poles, and then whatever else I have, I'll lay that around it to really secure it. Not everything fit in there, but the priority items did. Some of these items can sit out. Not weather, snow, whatever it is, free is not gonna hurt it, and the, the value's not there uh, to try to protect them. So almost done. So I just left the frame of the wall tent there. There was no need to um, pick it up. I don't think it's going to rust it too much. Might get a little dirt inside the um, railings, but there it is. Everything wrapped up nice and tight inside the waste management canvas dumpster bags and then a 7 mil tarp surrounded by logs and tent stakes to hold it down. One of these years, this is the first year we bought the property in July, one of these years we will not have to do this as we will have a solid structure here of some magnitude. But until then, we gotta get a driveway first. Um, Peaceful Pines, we will leave the sign up. We'll sleep over the winter for the next four and a half-ish months until we return in probably April. It gets very cold up here. Negative 22 to 25 is not uncommon with snow on the ground. It is the north woods of Wisconsin. We've done everything that we were asked to do. When it comes to the deer hunting, had three tags. Good Lord, let me get three deer. Got two in two days. And deer camp only lasted two days but it was two very successful days and thank you for coming along on the journey if you made it this far let's put deer camp in the comments below 
and we will have some additional videos coming up about the property and some unique things, uh, highlighting some things. But until next time, we will see you then. Thanks so much.